Hey there, I'm Joshua Finn from j and Aerospace. Today we're going to build something a little bit different. This is the propeller pitch gauge from j and Aerospace. And this is a, uh, a tool that you'll use for indoor model airplanes. So hopefully you're here looking to, to join in that world. This is something that allows you to accurately set up your propellers. So what we'll do is we'll get started here. I'll show you what's in the kit. So this is a very, very limited parts inventory. There are only three things in it. Um, we'll mention there's a uh, general arrangement drawing back here. Uh, but the important thing, this is what you'll actually be using um, later in the kit, is that you have this, this little table, which is your pitch table, and you will need this, so don't, don't lose it. You'll, you'll want to attach it to the, the gauge at some point. So the three things, you have a, a little servo screw, um, you have this, this uh, the propeller hub mast, and you have your 1 16th inch uh, plywood parts. So let's get started here. We'll, we'll put this together. I'm going to go get some wax paper to lay down so we don't get any glue on the table. Okay, find yourself a razor blade. And let's go ahead and we'll cut these parts out. Hope that the uh, birdie stops sharing his input on on how awesome this this tool is. He doesn't seem inclined to do so. So let's see if we can address that. Now it's important that you maintain orientation on this, so don't flip it over. What we're going to do is we're going to glue these two parts together. Now the alignment in here of all of this is non-critical. What is critical is that this hole over here allows that post to sit vertically. It's very important that, um, that that's maintained. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this, we're going to hit the underside of this one. Hold on a second. Have some excess on there. So we hit the underside of this with our glue. And make sure there's no curvature or anything. Get a little bit of delamination over here, so we'll squirt some glue in. And there we go. So now we've got the base partially assembled. This is a fairly easy thing to complete, fortunately, because only a few parts here. And there we go. So, now take these little circular pieces and pop them out. We've got two of these. And what we're going to do is we're going to glue these together. Um, and we'll want to do that on this post so we make sure they're lined up fairly well. You may wish to wax the, um, the post or something like that so that um, the glue doesn't stick to it because ideally you have this set up to where you can pull the post out of there for storage. Um, some of you that may not be important, um, but the, the goal is to maintain that utility if, um, if at all possible. 
So now we set this guy back in here. And we eyeball it carefully to make sure that it's straight. The most important part is that it be straight in this direction because all of your angles are going to be set up that way. So hit that with CA. Get the post out. And then, oh, I've got a little delamination over here too. And now we'll hit that with the accelerator. And we'll be right back. Okay, so we have this all secured. Post fits in very nicely. Next thing to do is take these these little pieces right here that have a little arrow on them and go ahead and break them out. You probably will need a razor blade to get through the little tabs here. Maybe. There we go. These two pieces we are just going to glue together. So they're perfectly straight across there. Nothing too complex on that. Um, we'll mention I'm using thin CA to secure these. I do not actually recommend that you use that um, because it, it works too quickly. So what you would prefer to use is, is use medium CA. If you're a true woodworker, of course, you could go and, and get um, wood glue or something of that nature. There we go. And so that's going to sit over here in these tracks. The way that we make it sit in the tracks is you've got these little rectangular pieces with a kind of funny looking cutouts in them. And you will want to take little burrs off the bottom of these elsewhere. You don't have to worry about it. Um, but since these are going to ride in those tracks, you do want them to be correct. Now you'll take these in pairs and you'll glue them together like so. Once you have these done, they fit in the little notches right here, like this. You can see that they fit like so. And the other one goes over on the other side. Like that. Try to get those parallel or get more to the point so this thing stands up straight. you want it to be fairly straight across here. And then we're just going to hit this with CA. Just to put you. There we go. Right. And then I recommend 
recommend sealing these in here pretty good as they are a core element of this component of this part of the pitch gauge. You don't want those drifting. important that you keep these tracks with this clean um, because this piece sits down in those tracks and it rides across. And so right now I've got these little marks and I'm going to set this one at this one which is three inches radius from our center point. Now over time, this, that piece will probably start to loosen up. And that's why we have these little notches, and the purpose of those is you can just wrap a rubber band across either side and hold that in place. Next thing is we come up here to our mast, and we take these pieces right here. We take one and we're going to mount it up at the top. that with a little bit of accelerator. Try not to glue it to yourself like I did. There we go. Now for the second, eh, for the second one of these, let me pull the mast out actually. We're going to take this and we're going to slide it in and we'll put it probably um, you can measure this out, but I'm, I'm basically I'm putting it a quarter of an inch down. Um, and the reason you don't want to put it a whole lot more than that is for some airplanes that you build, you're going to have a, um, a fairly narrow or a fairly short propeller shaft. So like on mini sticks or something like this, uh, this may actually, for a typical mini stick, this is actually probably too long. Um, too far of a distance between here. Alright, so let me hit that with accelerator one more time just to make it stay put. And there you go. So we're going to set this piece back in. And now you'll find this little dial looking thing. It looks like a protractor. We're going to pop it loose. Now, the main thing is across this top surface, you're going to want to remove all of the burrs, and I actually would say take this and sand it, and then on the corners here, round those off. That way you don't snag anything on this surface. And then we're going to take this and screw it in place with our little servo screw. And over time this will probably loosen up in here, so you'll want to um, you'll want to um, tighten those threads up with, with CA. So you can put wax on this on this screw and then screw it in there, CA it, and that'll secure the threads. But now you have this little arrow right down here. You can set whatever angle you want. Alright, so we'll be back in a second where I put together a propeller on this so you can see how to use it. Okay, so we're back with a set of propeller blades. These already have the spar on them. Typically what I will do is I'll join the spar together and then uh, put the blades on. Um, but to, depending on your, t like for an F1D, you're going to have to do them like this because the spar is a, a part, a structural component of the blade. So I'm going to take a set of round nose pliers here and we'll get that part started. Um, let's see, I'm going to make a regular propeller hook. This is a, a set of penny plane propeller blades. And so I'm going to 
bend this hook around. Clip the tail off of it a little bit. And so you end up with a shape that looks like that. And now I'm going to go about, uh, I'm going to make this shaft uh, about an inch and a quarter long. And snip it off here. And in plane, we will bend it over 90 degrees. So now you have that shape right there. And so, first of all, put this in incorrectly. And I'm going to take a uh, rubber band. So, a little piece of rubber here. And I'm going to take that rubber band, stick it in here like so. You want to keep this kind of loose uh, depending on your propeller size. All right. So you can see what I've done is I've secured this propeller shaft inside here. So it latches into those, those corners like so. Now I've got it sticking up a little bit right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this propeller um, and we've got our gauge here. I'll show you how to glue this, show you what to do with it in a second. Um, so I'm at three inches radius and I want, um, I want a 20 inch pit. Alright, so we have our angle set. Now what I'm going to do for this one is make that approximate angle. Now I'm going to cut a notch in my uh, propeller spar right here. It kind of matches that. I'm going to take this propeller and put it over here. I'm going to lay it in place. I'm going to hit it with a little dab of glue. too much on it. And now we'll harden that up. Right. So you can see blade is resting there like so. And now all I have to do is turn it around and notch this side as well. I can slide it in place. So what I'm going to do to speed things along there, I'm going to ask, let's try this. So what I'm doing is I'm pre-setting this up with my uh, accelerator. You want to make sure you've got it perfectly positioned before you put any glue on because it will harden instantly. And there you go. So now that blade is secured. So, as you can see, we're all set. And now you have two equal pitch blades. Alright, so this is how you use your propeller pitch gauge. Um, and then all you have to do when you're done is you'll take this uh, this rubber band loose and uh, I actually got a little bit of glue on my propeller shaft there and now you're all set. Um, I will mention one thing um, that kind of improves the usability of your pitch gauge is um, this part right in here I would wax this up very very strongly so that, so that any glue that gets on it will not stick. Now one last thing we'll show you right here is everything breaks down 
for storage and you're all good. So, Okay, so we have one other thing to do here which is take that little gauge and I, I've sprayed 3M77 contact uh, adhesive on this and so I can just go down here and stick it on the back. So now I have that with my gauge so when I pop it out I put it together I have that and I have information on how to use it. So that's just one way to do it. Anyway Hope this will be a, a useful tool to y'all. If you have any questions or comments, concerns, etc., put them in the comments section below. Um, and if you want to want any more tools like this, tell us what you'd like to look at. So we'll talk to you later. Bye bye.